Hello everybody, my name is Rachel and this is my review of God's War and Infidel by Cameron Hurley. This series takes place on a colonized planet. It is a wild, dangerous place that is barely fit for human habitation. Insects run the world, like they literally run everything. Bugs are fuel and power, they're used for building materials, they're even used for medicine. The bug technology in the series, it completely exemplifies how brutal and weird and yet fascinating this series can be. The first book, God's War, concerns two countries called Nashin and Chenja that have been embroiled in a centuries-long religious war. Both of these countries basically feed all of their young men to die in this war. The protagonist of this series is named Nyx, and she starts off as a beldam, or basically a government-sanctioned bounty hunter, who goes after young boys who defect from the war and cuts off their heads. So she starts out as a beldam, but she very quickly screws up, gets kicked out of the beldam club, goes to prison for a couple of years, and then after she gets out of prison, uh, she spends about seven years putting together a crew of people and working as a bounty hunter on her own, scratching out a living. The other main character in the series is named Rhys. He is from Chenja and he defies his father and goes to fight in the war. He actually ends up crossing the war zone and making his way all the way to Nasheen. When he gets there, he's taken in by a magician who's a type of person who can control the bug technology of this world. He starts out as a dancer, he works in the gym, and he kind of learns some magician skills. And while he's there, he meets Nyx and she adds him to her team. Then, as in all good stories, an alien gene pirate comes to town. Because of her past, Nyx gets the note on the alien's head because the queen wants the alien taken out for political reasons. So Nyx and her crew go after this alien and it ends... badly. Infidel is the second book, so I can't go into too much detail. I don't want to accidentally spoil anything that happens in God's War. This picks up about six years after the ending of God's War. Nyx's original crew has scattered. They have built new lives for themselves in another country, and Nyx has remained in Nasheen and put together a new crew. One day, while Nyx is acting as a bodyguard to an ambassador's daughter, a group of Beldams attacks them, which they're lucky to get away with their lives. They do get away, and Nyx immediately suspects that these Beldoms have been acting illegally, like they've been pursuing a black note on the ambassador's daughter, but then the next day, the ambassador's daughter shows up and says, they weren't after me, they were after you. It turns out that the two main sources of power in Nasheen, the Beldom Council and the Queen, are in conflict. Part of the Beldam Council has gone rogue and they're trying to topple the Queen's power. And Nyx and her old and new teams get pulled into this and they are trying to stop this from happening because it could open up Nasheen to losing the war to Chenja. Also, there's this gray sand that, like, wants to eat everybody's blood. Let's go on to the cool bits about these books. Hurley has crazy weird world building that you've never seen anywhere else, and she does it really well. Also, her characters are diverse, messed up, and realistic. Nyx is... Oh, she's a hard ass, but she is not a genius. She's not a mastermind, and in Infidel, I think it's actually implied a little bit that she might have, like, brain damage or something something seriously wrong with her, she can't think very well sometimes. Nyx's defining trait seems to be surviving horrible bouts of violence and then always coming back. Reese, I think, is the most likable character throughout both of these books. Yeah, Nyx is the protagonist, but I'm not sure if you're always rooting for her. She describes herself as a monster in Infidel, and not even her friends contradict her. So Hurley has a pretty large cast. It is a revolving cast. People die, new people are introduced, but the, the size of the cast is never unmanageable. You get a lot of interesting viewpoints and just enough point of view characters in each book to make the story interesting and to get a, a pretty complete picture of what's happening. 
I really like that all of the characters seem really different from each other. They have different politics, they have different, very different moralities, different beliefs, especially religious beliefs, and they do come from different countries and regions and ethnicities. I just have to talk about what Hurley kind of is trying to do with the setting and the world building and the character dynamics. Hurley likes to upend the stereotypical worlds and cultures and gender roles of science fiction. She flips around attitudes towards gender, she gives you a taste of reverse sexism, and she puts all of her characters in some really uncomfortable, violent situations that don't have black and white answers. This is a really gray world. Unfortunately, I have the suspicion that I, I can't shake yet that Hurley might be better at world building, at, at creating a fantastic setting, than at, than at plot or telling a story in a really coherent fashion so that she doesn't lose the reader. For example, with God's War, while I was reading it, I was so impressed at how unusual it was, but at the same time, while reading it, I couldn't really tell you what the story was. Now, Infidel is a step up from God's War, in my opinion. I think the writing is better, the pacing is better, the characters and the world building remain really fascinating. And I think, I think the key thing about reading this book and what made it a much more even, enjoyable read for me was that the plot points, what was actually happening at certain times, was made much more clear. Now, why did I read this? Um, it has a lot of bugs, and I have an irrational fear of spiders. It has a lot of violence, it has some gore, and that's not something I really care for in my fiction. I don't find it to be escapist. I picked up God's War when I first heard about reading diversely and about the portrayal of women in science fiction and in fantasy. So I was actively looking for a book like this. It was a natural thing to just fall in my lap when I was looking for something like it. God's War was the first book that I picked up, the first science fiction book that I picked up, that had absolutely no connection to my real life. It's not some white American's vision of what a science fictional colony would be like. I appreciate God's War and Infidel for pushing me outside of my comfort zone, for making it impossible for me to go back to reading stereotypical, tropish fiction. I'm never going to be happy with that kind of stuff anymore. I'm going to be more demanding and, and much more picky about what I read in the future. I do hope that other people would pick up these books and have the same experience that I did, but I think your true appreciation of these books is going to depend on two things. Your personal taste. This, These may just be books that you don't like. And the second thing is that they might have to come to you at the right point in your reading life. Like I said, when I picked up the first book, I was looking to expand my horizons and to change what I was reading. In summary, I gave both of these books four stars on Goodreads, but over on Library Thing, you can give half star ratings, so I gave them three and a half stars over there. I do think both of these books are a little bit above average, if nothing else because they try really hard to tackle harsh, difficult subject matter, and Cameron Hurley does not flinch at all when she's writing this stuff. If you have read God's War and or Infidel, or if you're interested in reading them, please comment. I would love to talk about these books or Cameron Hurley's writing in general. I have similar thoughts on The Mirror Empire, her latest book conflicted and yet appreciative, so I would I would love to have a discussion about that. I do think I've talked long enough in this video though, so that's it for me, and until next time, goodbye.